of Amrita S. Kumar, IAS. I have secured an All India rank of 179 in the 2023 civil services exams. So my association with St. Charles Borromeo School starts way back in 2001 when I have joined here as a kindergarten student and I have spent almost 12 years of my life here till I graduated from 10th grade. So St. Charles is not just a school or an academy to me, it is exactly my home. So I have had teachers uh, and mentors here who have shaped me as a student, a child and then as a teenager and have prepped me for my life uh, after the school. So in St. Charles School, we have had a very strict curriculum wherein English education had been given at most priority. We were even made to speak in English inside our campus. So this has helped me immensely in my days after the school because uh, through English, my articulation skills have highly, highly improved and my communication capabilities have been enhanced. So I believe speaking in English has given me a sense of confidence which would help me ace the later, in the later stages of my life, especially when it comes to the UPSC interview and all. Uh, we have to be very confident in our essence, in the way in which we put forth our ideas. So St. Charles School had, been, uh, had played a very important role in incrementing my articulation skills in the English language as such. So when I was in St. School, I have done various leadership roles over uh, 12 years of my life here. So I have been a class monitor. I have worked as a leader from the teachers, principals have mentored me. I have realized how a leader should stand. Friend, guide his herd, just like them. Now when I look, I have taken up a career which leads at most importance, leadership and uh, commandership. I think uh, my experience with St. has given me that confidence that in the forthcoming life I'll be able to take up even tougher tasks which uh, I have done as a student. When I was a student in St. Charles, I have felt that the ICAC syllabus, the curriculum as such, had been very tough and a hard nut to crack. But uh, only after I have graduated from here and went into higher secondary school and my college, I had realized that the syllabus and the curriculum that we have here or the, uh, the ICC syllabus as such is very uh, advanced and it requires a lot of in-depth understanding from the students. So uh, if I can say a small example, in the civil services exam we had to study about uh, policy, Indian policy, the constitution and uh, the uh, civic values and all. So uh, the, uh, the, if you look into the history, geography syllabus and the civic syllabus of Central of ICAC as such, uh, it had been uh, very vast and it had covered almost uh, a beginner level uh, for my civil services exam. So I never found it very difficult when other students found it very difficult to learn history and policy. I found it a cakewalk because I have had a, a beginner friendly initiation from uh, 8th to 10th standard in St. Charles. So uh, I think uh, it, it might seem difficult for the students when they are studying in this school but once you reach a later stage in life you will realize that the syllabus is so future ready. It equips you so much to understand the new world problems and challenges and it is not a mere textbook knowledge that you gain from here. It is uh, definitely a practical and a life experiences that the syllabus as such teaches you. So if I, uh, if I have to say about the teachers who have uh, taught me here in St. Charles, this conversation might get very long. Uh, so uh, uh, my teachers here, uh, the, te the teachers who have taught me over these 12 years have not just been academic mentors, just academic mentors. They have been really life coaches for all of us and mentors who have, uh, who have shaped our ideals across these years. Uh, so uh, mainly when it comes to when when we were teenagers, you know that is a stage where we face a lot of issues, not just academic, many personal issues, conflicts. Uh, you you are in a rebellious phase where you do not know, you do not really want to study, or you do not know what to do with life. So that is when the teachers, who are my class teachers, and the other subject teachers who have helped me a lot. Not just me, my entire batch. We all are very much grateful to our teachers who have shaped us here today. So we have uh, had a, our teachers were more, more, more than just teachers, they were more a parents for us. So they have had different parenting styles. Uh, you know, there were some teachers who were very strict, like a father, they used to scold us or you know, give us a harsh, uh, harsh remark whenever we did something wrong. And also there have been other teachers who are more 
loving and caring like a mother. They used to make us understand things in a more applicable manner and make sure that we do not repeat that mistakes again. So we have had that mix of uh, teaching style uh, from from our mentors here, from our teachers here in Central. So I feel really grateful uh, for them, and I would like like to take this opportunity to thank them for uh, helping all of us navigate. Uh, not just our school days, but you know, forthcoming uh, days of our life after that. So this is my kindergarten campus. So here is where I have started my life as a student. And today, when I come back here, having achieved, have made a remarkable academic achievement. Uh, I feel uh, a lot of great grat gratitude. Uh, I'm indebted as, as such a lot to this walls and buildings. So uh, this this seems like a dream come true moment for me coming back here, cherishing all of this again, uh, living through here, walking here again. So uh, really been feeling very much gratitude right now. Uh, so this is my old classroom. Uh, this is where uh, we have written our board exams and studied for a very long period of time. So this is the corridor where we have formed a lot of friendships. Uh, we have shared a lot of joy, laughter, and even stories. So this place has a very, very special, uh, very special place in my heart. So when I come back here, when I stand here right now, the memories seem so fresh, and and uh, this will be a, a, a corridor and an atmosphere which I will always, always cherish, and will be in a very special part of my heart, no matter how how long forth I go uh, from here in my further life or in my career. So I will always aspire to come back here to be a student again here and relive all of these moments uh, again once again. The civil services exams are conducted every year by a constitutional body called UPSC in order to recruit candidates uh, to fill up the top notch roles in the administration or the Indian bureaucracy. So the exam as such consists of three stages. The first stage is the preliminary stage, wherein you have to attempt 100, quest 100 questions in the OMR format. So the primary requirement to appear for a preliminary exam is that you should have a degree. Uh, you should get a degree from an acknowledged university or an institute in India. That is the bare minimum requirement of the uh, exam for, uh, for uh, submitting to the preliminary exam. And once you've cleared the preliminary exam, there is two papers for the preliminary exam. Uh, the first paper is a general studies paper wherein you have to uh, attempt questions based on subjects like history, geography, polity, economy, uh, like that. And the second paper is a max paper wherein you have to attempt questions based on general aptitude and general awareness. Now, once, the prelims, once you've cleared the preliminary stage, the next stage is a written exam, which is called the mains exam. So, the mains exam consists of nine papers. Which is uh, which you have to write for three hours each. So it's a very long exam or a long lengthy process which spans across two weeks. So you have to write uh, nine papers in three hours format, uh, which is very meticulous and it has a lot of diverse subjects there from history, geography, international relations, Indian society, and there you have an optional paper also in that which I have mentioned earlier. Mine was Malayalam literature, but there is 28 different subjects which the UPSC offers. You can choose any one from that uh, according to your aptitude and your interest and you can write in that. So once you have cleared the main exam, the next stage, the final stage is the interview stage or uh, it is not just an interview, it is a personality assessment stage. So uh, in that stage, uh, you submit a bio data of yourself, a detailed uh, uh, DAF or it is called DAF, a detailed application form of yourself and then it is a panel interview. It consists of five members with one chairman and four board members. So they will be interviewing you for around 20, 30, 30 minutes and they will assess your personality, assess your character, your team building skills or your leadership abilities and then you'll be given a marks on that. So the interview is conducted in New Delhi in the UPC Bhavan itself. Uh, so these are the three stages. And uh, finally, uh, the marks of your main exam and the interview exam is taken. So that is your total marks. And based on that marks, uh, you uh, a rank list is prepared. Uh, and uh, uh, the rank goes up to 900. So if you are in anywhere from 1 to 900 rank, you will get selected into one of the bureaucratic posts of the Indian administration or in the Indian Police Service or the Indian Revenue Service. There are different services, not just the IAS. Um, there is the Indian Statistical Service, Indian Railway Management Service. So there are numerous posts within the 
uh, Indian bureaucracy, so you'll be assigned as a civil servant in any one of these posts. The uh, cutoff rank for the Indian administrative services will change year by year. It will depend on the number of vacancies that are available for the Indian administrative service that year. This year there have been 180, 180 vacancies. So uh, if you are a general category candidate, the rank get closed around 70 to 75. That is up to where you, uh, you can get, you can be sure of getting IAS. After that, you might get uh, allocated to IPS or the Indian Revenue Service, IRS also. Now, depending upon the uh, reservations, whether you are from the other backward community or a scheduled caste or scheduled tribe community, uh, the rank uh, the rank window will expand. Uh, so, uh, there will be greater chances uh, to get into service. So, a uh, total there will be 180 seats and uh, this year there have been 180 seats. So, that is allocated across the communities including general category and the reservation categories. To all the students who are aspiring to take this exam in near future, my message to you would be make sure you have a proper plan before starting over uh, because this exam involves a lot of luck, there is a lot of uncertainty uh, and uh, the pass percentage is very low not because of the toughness of this exam but because of the limited number of vacancies that we have in the bureaucracy. So make sure you start off with a very solid plan and while you are a student, uh, make sure you make your basics very thorough uh, when it comes to mathematics, economy, uh, social sciences, uh, all the other science subjects also. All of this have to be studied again in the civil services exam. So when you are studying in this school, make sure you utilize all the opportunities here. You study your syllabus and curriculum thoroughly and your foundations are very strong. Then the rest assured, you will be able to uh, navigate this exam easily if you have uh, done all the preparation as a beginner. Now when I look back, uh, the 12 years that I have spent in St. Charles is the most memorable, uh, most cherished and most beautiful things of my life. Uh, when I come back to this campus again, all the memories are still very fresh. My farewell party, the annual sports day, the inter-house competitions that we had here, the debates, uh, the numerous cultural activities that we have celebrated in this ground are very fresh and clear in my, in my memory. Uh, now I become, uh, I, I feel myself like again like a 14 year old or a 15 year old here who have been walking through this campus uh, and I never knew that was I was living the best days of my life back then. So today when I stand here, I feel a lot of happiness. Um, I feel much more, much more than happiness. I feel a lot of gratitude to all the teachers, uh, my friends who have uh, built me here, my mentors, my teachers who have acted as my mentors and the principals here who I have been uh, mentored by. So uh, at this moment, I would like to thank them all. Thank you so much for making me who I am right now.